fake bags that smelled really, really bad. There's another know-how, which is the savoir-faire in this process, as brands actually use very specially made fragrances into the mix of their glue. The moment you receive your new car, you're always enjoying this aroma. There is science and also psychology behind this to back up why this exists. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to share with you five ways to identify a fake Louis Vuitton. And obviously we're not trying to be absolute here, so these five ways will be five indications that you can look for when you're near one. And I do this very often, especially this habit cultivated when I was working for Louis Vuitton. And after I have been able to see and touch the product on a daily basis, your brain already starts gathering like a set of data that when you see a product that is from this brand you already have like a radar around it and sometimes when I stumble upon something that is like obvious obvious fake I just can't you know I can't help but thinking like how is someone able to wear this piece knowing that it's not real like if you were to buy it from a legitimate platform there's like a wiggle room between you not knowing because you paid the money for the product and then the team didn't do a good job identifying you know these items but then there's another thing that you just go straight up and buy fake things and those can come across very obvious so nonetheless um, I'm going to show you guys the five indications to spot a fake Louis Vuitton. First of all is the look of it. The proportion is very important. What I mean by that is whenever I see a Neverfull shoulder strap is extra thick, it just seems very off. We shouldn't forget that before the product is designed and made into an actual item these go through so many rounds of inspection and how are they gonna lay it and where are they gonna put the authentication you know label or watermark or whatever from the brand to prevent counterfeit products so these are made in like you know with a beauty ratio or whatever that's why you and I love it so much so when you see one on the street that someone is carrying with like strap that is obviously thicker than it's supposed to be that is an indication and unfortunately I've seen like so many times of the Neverfulls looking super odd because of the straps that is just a no-go for me and that's the first thing I see um, another example would be the speedy oftentimes I see See speedy with a handle that is much taller than it's supposed to be and you're like why did they even make it that way you're gonna think if someone is doing a business copying other people's thing they should do it hundred percent they obviously leave it a little bit longer or sometimes the distance between the two handles are wider but we're talking about obvious you know mistakes so I think speedy is another huge one because everybody has it so those are indications for the look and the proportion of it second is the hardware it's really difficult to tell I will say in the beginning when the products are brand new because they are all new out of factory they might look very similar and also like boy bags that's full of chains the hardware could really be generic trust me brands have spent money and invested their finance into making these products perfect so the counterfeit people couldn't really copy just like that but with Louis Vuitton I believe the hardware color is very easy to identify as well from my past experience as the fake ones usually look a lot more yellowish and brassy compared to original one which looks very champagne -y, buttery and also just perfect gold color so that is another huge indication that I see whenever I stare at the hardware I'm like there's no way this is authentic because everything about that bag just doesn't look pleasant that is another thing that um, you're able to tell when you see something so hardware is another thing. third one is gonna be harder because most of the time you're looking at someone wearing the bag what I've experienced is I've stumbled upon fake bags that smelled really really bad there's another know-how which is the savoir-faire in this process as brands actually use very specially made fragrances into the mix of their glue where they where they do the wax seal and you know the lining and the glue whenever needed to apply the fake one doesn't even come across close to that the ones that's fake clearly smell like it's very 
it's this very strong odor and chemical smell that would come out of a bag the moment you get close to that bag. And even with wearing and airing out, I don't think it helps because the smell is just gonna be there. And the original one, however, will be the moment you receive your new car, before you start driving it, you're always enjoying this aroma. And there are science and also psychology behind this to back up why this exists like that. So the same thing applies for handbags. The smell of it, the glue they use, I even heard that Louis Vuitton developed a special scent that can be combined with the glue. So when the glue dries up, you also have this very beautiful aroma that is um, lingering around inside of your handbag. And I'm sure if you own the authentic ones you have definitely you know had the moment when you open the box and you smell the product it's just so pleasant to have and the fake does nothing but the opposite next very obvious point is the color I think this is what the fake factories has been struggled a lot from the beginning. It's very hard to get the color right, despite what kind of canvas it is, whether it be the monogram or the Damier Ebang or the Damier Azua. Um, it's very hard for counterfeit makers to produce exact color as the original Louis Vuitton canvas. And believe it or not, it's really not that easy to copy. However, the technology has gotten better and better over the years, so that it's becoming harder to identify. But still, if you were to place an authentic Louis Vuitton piece next to a fake one, you can almost, I can almost guarantee you that when you're comparing them, the colors are different and they're never the same. And that's kind of like, you know, that you don't think too much about it, but once you put two and two together, it would make sense. So it's gonna be harder when you're seeing someone carrying the piece with them and you're like, is this real or fake? But if that thought ever come across your mind, maybe you should just trust your gut and just keep doubting it because we, you know, have an eye for these things. And like I said, from my experience of being, you know, we're, from working for the brand, I have developed my own judgment over these products. It comes from proportion, the color, the smell, the touch. Um, so whenever I see one, my radar just kind of goes off. That's another one. The color is a very, very detailed one. It's a very intricate one. So do pay attention to that element as well. <coughs> Lastly is obviously the material. We're spending money into buying these luxury goods because they know what they do and the brand retains value very well. So all the money that you spend goes into the physical aspect of it, the touch, the feel. Um, obviously material is like a very big part. Um, the real canvas is made to prevent, you know, water from going into any of the items back in like 1940s um, because Louis Vuitton was the original trunk maker, but he only worked with very prestigious businessmen to customize these things. And the lifestyle back then was that they travel on water, they sail a lot. So these products have to stand the test of time. That's why the canvas has borne. It's a waterproof canvas with a fabric lining that is very lightweight, it's water resistant, and it's, it also has got a very signature um, aesthetic. So the canvas itself, the softness and the way it feels is very hard to achieve with someone who doesn't really know the secret ingredients. So in that sense, um, canvas is very easy to crack. So on really cheap quality, fakes um, the canvas usually is the first thing that cracks where the stitches will come off like a lot of things could go wrong really really fast versus an authentic item you can use it and still enjoy you know the leather the material aging beautifully but obviously there's another topic of Louis Vuitton's quality declining over the years, which I have experienced. But overall, you know, the quality is there. It's just the details are not as on par as, you know, a few years ago. So that's another indication, I guess. I would say the canvas shouldn't look very um, hard. It's actually soft 
and if it cracks and if it just looks odd, the flexibility is off, that's good enough to be another indication to tell you that something is off with the bag that the person's carrying. Nonetheless, I can definitely go in depth. These are the five general areas I wanted to touch upon without using, you know, a detector or a measurement or other devices to identify the authenticity of a bag. That is another thing, but it's good to be on the lookout, especially when you are shopping from a website that you're not too familiar with, which I don't recommend you to do just because the liability part of it, what if you really ended up, you know, carrying home a fake that they tried to sell as real, um, you know, you would have to take upon that hit on your own finance wise. So I do think it's good to always buy from reputable person and places. And it's always good to request for other collaterals like the bag, the dust bag, or the receipt and everything. But you know, there could be so many creative ways for people to make fakes to sell. So it's best if you get it from the source, I will say. However, I hope these five indications could help you guys make a better and more thorough decision before you buy any secondhand pieces. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM or leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up because it really supports the channel. And I look forward to chatting with you in the next one. Take care guys, bye. <laughs>